So the other way I can improve my sketch using my new reference is maybe build a little bit more interest in this foreground. The foreground is the thing that's directly in front of the viewer. So I have this kind of big stone here, that shadow in one that I was thinking. But wouldn't it be a little bit more interesting if maybe I use a more compelling shape, right? Like this figure of stones. It's kind of post and lintel. So this is going to be part of my foreground, right? And I can combine these elements. So I'm going to put this as element six. And then I'm thinking, you know, because this is AI generated and this stone is pretty boring. And I thought from a distance, I liked how these, this plant looked. But when I look up close, it just looks like all the same kind of repeated texture. So instead, I might just swap this, swap this in as my foreground element, right? And what can I do? I can always flip it. I can do this in Photoshop. I can do it in preview. And then that's going to be kind of a foreground element, maybe like this part of it. A big part of compositing is, is using the right kind of reference, right? It's not always best to use more and more and more reference, but it's good to have backups if you need it. So for, for number uh, two here with number four for this middle ground, I also have this. I'm going to call this 4B, which can support that middle ground if I need it. because I like all of these. Okay, so now I've got a bunch to layer up. Now let me show you how I might sketch those elements again vertically. And let's use 1A for the foreground. So I'm gonna have this kind of stone here in the foreground. And then I do want this background, I do want this moon and these the wavy galaxy, you know, so that's going to be my sky. And then I think I want six as this really strong foreground right here. We're kind of looking through. These do not need to be good sketches. They just need to be clear to you. So that's going to be even overlapping number one. So those are my foreground. And then they give kind of a window to, I think, number four. I like the color shift there for my middle ground. And then built behind that middle ground, I'm going to use number two. That will give me some of these spikes. I'm trying to avoid the flag thing, right, where everything's horizontal. I'm trying to avoid horizontals. So it's good to have elements that cut across these borders, right? And give kind of interesting negative shapes. So this would be number two. Now I have one, four, three, I have five elements there. And now I get to decide which one do I like better. You can always post both of them but you're going to have to choose one for your project, right? So I'm going to do a screen grab of it. And I can do a screen grab of my references too, though you don't need to post those. But just to make it clear in the assignment. And then I have to choose, or I can let you guys choose, should I do the vertical format or should I do the horizontal format? So I'll post them. You can kind of see what I'm thinking, right? And often, uh, personally, I will like my second sketch more. Because my, my brain has been able to absorb the, um, the references a little bit better. So here are my references. 
and I can always find more as needed. And then here are my new sketches, my improved sketches. So what do you think? Vertical or horizontal? So look at them just for a second, help me out. You can always ask the people next to you. Part of good problem solving creatively is getting external points of view as input. Doesn't mean you need to do what they say, right? But it informs your thinking. So make a decision about which one just kind of looks maybe more compelling. And then raise your hand if you like the, the bottom one, the horizontal composition. Make them nice and high. All right, good showing for that one. And then for the vertical composition. All right, fewer. So we're gonna go with, with the horizontal. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a screen grab of that. Now, if you're doing this all in your sketchbook, you need to get that sketch into your computer. So how do you do it? Well, I will demonstrate. Let's pretend this is my sketchbook. I am using my I think this is a nine-year-old phone. It's an Android phone. I turn on my camera, I take a picture of it, and then I am going to put it, open up my camera app, and then I upload that photo. I'm not gonna edit it at all. I'm gonna use the share options, and I can either email it to myself, on an email that I can get to, or I can put it into what I use is Google Photos. So upload to photos. And then everything we need to, you know, log into, right? So then I go to my Google Photos. Bum, 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 bum. Refresh it until there it is. And then I can download it. And now it's on my computer to use. Now, just like a screen grab, when you take a digital photo, that is a way of rasterizing something. So even if this was done in pencil, your camera is going to turn it into pixels. And it's okay if they're blurry. It's okay if it's not a great image. It's okay if it's low resolution. This is like our blueprint for putting our landscape together. So we're going to go right to the next step. But this sketch is required with the project. Right? You can always include more, but this is the sketch I'm choosing. Right? So now what we do is we're going to open that sketch up in Photoshop. And there's two ways to do that. You can right click on it once it's on your desktop and say open with Photoshop. Or you can drag and drop it to the Photoshop icon in your dock. And I can close that and save it. All right. So now I have the sketch I want. And I still want to have my references available. So let me make sure those are open. And off to the side for my surreal desert. And if I don't need them to take up so much space anymore, because I kind of know what they are, I can click on the three dots in the finder, say show view options, and shrink those a bit. Fit them all in. So I'll just keep those off to the side. Now, I need to check the image size of this. Because for our assignment, it needs to be at least 8 by 10 inches. So it can be 8 by 10 or bigger. It cannot be smaller than 8 by 10 inches. And it has to be at least 300 pixels per inch. Because I signed in to Pixabay, all of my images are, if I look at the size, in pixels, they're all well above 1,000 pixels. I think at max they're 4,000 by 6,000 pixels. That's big. So viewing that at actual size, that's just a lot of detail, right? So I can go bigger than 8 by 10 if I want to. And I'm going to use my favorite dimension for the class. And Photoshop can handle it well, better than PhotoP can. I'm going to change the image size of my sketch to 11 by 14 inches. But before I do that, I might want to use my guides. 
to kind of frame it in. Because notice I didn't draw the best rectangle. I don't need you to draw the best rectangle. But I can use my guides by using the move tool and clicking on the ruler. And if your rulers aren't there, just hit command R and they will be. And I can click on the ruler and drag out these kind of blue guides and frame my landscape. Now, once I've done that, I can use the crop tool, which is the fifth tool down. It's a dangerous tool, so I only ever use it when I have guides. And then I push the corners. They'll snap to the guides I put in. And then I hit return, and that actually gets rid of information. Right? And then I can do command semicolon to hide the guides. You can find that all under view options where you show or hide the guides. Okay, next. Now, this is what I want to make my image. So I, now I go to image size and I change it from whatever it is. I make sure the padlock is locked so the proportions are in there. And then I'm going to make the width 14 inches and then it's by 8. And that's okay. But I have enough resolution, I can go 11, 11 by 17. And then my resolution, I do not want 72. I want at least 300. But because I'm using Photoshop, I have high quality reference. I'm going to use 350, my preferred lab standard. All right, what does that do to my sketch? It makes it kind of blurry, but it's still all there. I can hit Command-0 to fit it all in. Now it's, I have the blueprint for it. But now if I just bring my artwork right into that, like we did with our exercise one, I'm going to have everything stacked on top of each other. It's going to be really confusing, right? So instead of doing that, think of this. We know this is 11 by 14, or it's actually 11 by 17. I can turn my guides back on. This is what matters. This is at the full pixel resolution. But I want to give myself some working space around it. I want to put my plan now in the middle of my drafting table so I can collage a bunch of things and cut them around it. So to do that, that's not image size, that's canvas size. And I'm going to grow my canvas by going to image canvas size. And I'm going to make it 40 inches by 30 inches. Why 40 by 30? Because that's the largest size for a standard four color professional printing press. That's the largest paper size. So it's good to know that because you have to kind of fit projects within that. If they get larger than that, like an old style billboard, they have to be kind of wallpapered together from multiple prints for prof professional printing, not inkjet printing. Okay, so now I have all these annoying gray squares, right? So if I want to get rid of that, I create a new layer and then I say edit fill, but instead of filling it with white, I want to kind of take it easy on my eyes and see really clearly what my composition is versus what the background. I'm going to fill it with middle gray, 50% gray. And then I'm going to push that layer underneath my sketch. All right. So that's exactly what you'll do if you're taking it from a photo that you put onto your computer. If you did it as a digital sketch, you can just take it from there, right? It just depends what resolution you did your digital sketch at. Remember that within these parameters, that is what's 11 by 14 or 11 by 17 or 8 by 10. Because if I do image size now, it's going to show me that it's 30 by 40 inches by 350, which is a big file. It's already 420 megabytes, almost to a, a gigabyte, right? With just two layers. But now when I bring stuff in, I'm going to start with the background first, the furthest thing away, which is this sky. I bring it in and it comes in at full size. So if it's too big or too small, I can transform it, but that looks just about perfect. If I want to stretch it a little bit, I can do Command T and then just stretch it up a little bit. But then I'm going to push it off to the side. I know it's there. It's still a smart object. I'm not going to rasterize it yet. What goes on top of that? Well, then I have number two, right? So I'm going to bring that in, stretch it a little bit bigger, 